Or Shogi. So Black History Month. Yes, um, supposedly Black History Month, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know when we talk about Black History Month, uh, we very rarely do we talk about the uh, Black Martial Arts Masters because uh, so many of people in our community don't know about mm -hmm. them. Um, when you hear Black Martial Arts Masters, what does that make you think about in terms of you smiling? I know one name we're going to talk about, but in terms of you know martial arts and you know it's contributing you know the quote unquote uh, black men in or and women in this mm -hmm. country and their contributions to martial arts. What do you think about uh, that? Underrated. Mm. Sometimes deliberately undermined. Yes. A couple of more unders, <laughs> but I'm not going to put that to uh, anything we want to focus on. We want to focus on the fact that there is such a thing as black history, black martial art history. Mm. But very much so, it's not even taught even in the martial arts. See, we would have a, a, a different argument if we said it wasn't taught in schools, which it should be taught in schools. Mm. Right? We learn about every other kind of history in school because it's about learning about culture and the society we live in and those that make contributions to it. We talk about every other history in sport. Uh, you don't have to play basketball for me to know that there's a basketball hall of fame. Right. And it's a history about a history of people in there. A baseball hall of fame. Good. And it's a history in there. But it, if we take it baseball, for example, we would think about the, the Negro League for a very long time and still to this day is not included in baseball history. Right. I mean, we can find it as yeah. being part of baseball history, but we don't look at it as it's baseball history. No, no. But the same thing happens in martial art. We got martial art history and we got black martial art history. It should be just history. Yeah. But the part about black martial art history is so segmentized and so it doesn't even have its own basis. It's really communal and it's really regional. Mm. Um, I don't speak on it that much because I have people around the world that I, I love and admire as far as martial arts, but usually when I'm speaking on I'm speaking about it from the East Coast end of it. Well, that's a sensitive subject. There's so many talented people across mm -hmm. in, in the West Coast, Black Karate Federation, yes, very talented. Yes, sir. And then we have so many karate masters out of uh, the Midwest. Yes, sir. You know, Ohio, uh, Victor Moore, mm -hmm. and that whole region. Then we have uh, the brothers down in D.C nasty and yeah, tremendous absolutely. talents and then even as far as philadelphia they, they have their own mm -hmm. black martial arts history that is completely different because they were strong with boxing and they developed differently absolutely. um off the top of your, you know if you can just list five names without being disrespectful who, who should we start the conversation with and then perhaps people on facebook can add on or social media they can add on with people we should know about who but who should we know about in martial arts history black martial arts history in the united states well as you said before you know we talk about west coast or midwest and the victor moore name that comes up all the time a lot of people may not know he was a gentleman that um did the demonstration with bruce lee right uh when the bruce lee demonstrated two inch punch mm. Uh, when talking to him personally, he'll tell you how that that video was cut it was. and edited and didn't show his participation in that. But nevertheless, just to give our listeners a, a point of reference and time of who we're talking about when we're talking about black people. And again, you don't get the recognition from that. Well, he at the time beat everybody, mm. and I do mean everybody, Good. that was performing out there in the tournament circuit at that time. Um, we, you know, I, I couldn't go, and I would really start the list here in the East Coast with a Supreme Grandmaster Dr. Moses Powell, uh, who's my teacher. And the reason why I'm going to edify so much, not naming a whole lot more people, because you even left out the Caribbean mm. out there. And Dr. Powell was one of the first martial artists to bring martial arts to that area. So a lot of people in that area, it's not very many people in the Caribbean that do not know the name Moses Powell. Mm. If you go from one side of this country to the other, he had affected people, all right? When we talk about Ed Parker, Ed Parker himself and Dr. Powell ran together, but Ed Parker was the founder of Kempo. Mm. Kempo was vast as well, why? But nevertheless, it's not the founders of these styles positioned to talk about Dr. Powell. Good. It's the people that were 
taught by him, the people who were affected by him, the communities that were affected by him, to be able to talk about his history because he was a humanitarian and, and so many other facets where he touched people's lives. Um, there's an expression that you may have heard before, if Muhammad doesn't go to the mountain, then the mountain should come to Muhammad, mm. right? Okay. And the sense that, what that says to me as a parable is that a lot of martial art teachers were in a strategic location, and if you wanted that training, you came to them. Right. Yeah. All right. You made your AKA pilgrimage to them. My teacher didn't do that. He went to you. Mm. Wherever the masses was, he went to them. He went in areas where there was no martial art, especially black men teaching martial art. He was one of the first black men to actually put his image on a patch. Up until his time, uh, logos didn't have images of anybody on them, and if they did, they sure they were not black. Mm. All right? He was one of the first people who actually taught uh, uh, officials and, and performed in front of the United Nations. Mm. All right? These are things that Everyday martial artists don't do much less black martial artists do. So he forged the way a big pioneer. Pioneer in ninjutsu, uh, O Sensei Ronald Duncan. Mm -hmm. Pioneer before people knew how to spell the word ninja, especially before the Ninja Turtles, <laughs> as most people know it to be. But um, bringing forth this pioneership. Mm -hmm. And these people here, uh, uh, Major Wallace, uh, uh, here on the East Coast, uh, so many others, that, and I'm naming it from what I know as being pioneers. And what I mean by that is, think about American martial art being not even 50 years old. Mm. Think of it, it's post-war, 1947. The GIs brought it back here, all right? We were not going to Asia, we wasn't going to Korea before the Korean War. We wasn't going there where they were practicing in Boston, in Japan, in the JKA, Main or Minor was one of the people who, the very first black man to bring Shotokan back here to the United States. Yeah, he was George Cofield's teacher. Yes, sir. George Cofield of the famed Tom Dojo, mm. who also united with Grandmaster uh, Thomas the Puppet. See, so it's a small circle with us, especially here on the East Coast. You can call it sort of a mecca or a place where a lot of spawning was done and spread out from. So you, could, you don't have to like that, but it is the truth. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take anything away from it the other martial artists around the country. So really it is about us collecting our stories, putting them together, putting them in writing, put them on the media, the World Wide Web is there for us to do. Mm. And collectively talk about our experiences and who we know to be these groundbreaking individuals, these people who change people's lives. A lot of them are still alive. Mm. But we're not as a group going back and echoing that truth, which should come from our mind because no one should be allowed to tell your story. It's your story, okay. right? So if you tell your story, then out of your mouth, the story will be told as if it was put down that way, not something that was left out. Well, if this is not, well, I don't see no blacks here, so I guess no blacks must have, uh, did martial art on the West Coast, mm. you see? Because the people who are telling the story are telling it from his perspective, his, his story. Indeed. And then you even mentioned something that was very wild. Um, you were talking about some parents, they, they will say that, you know, they know the black martial artists, but yeah. they didn't know they were black or martial arts masters. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's basically people who are outside of the martial arts, that's still their basic understanding. They, they, you know, they may see, you know, Michael Jai White or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Billy Blanks, but mm -hmm. they don't know beyond that, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, there's a, a wealth of black, uh, you know, when it comes to martial arts in this country and around the world, but in this country, you know, there are indeed black martial arts masters. Yeah, it's always like a joke to me because a parent actually came up to me and said, you know, you guys are good. I, I didn't realize to today there was such a thing as a black martial art master. In other words, people, they're not that ignorant to think that we don't practice martial art. We practice every sport in the world and good at it. But master? You know what I mean? There, there's some people out there as good as Serena and mm -hmm. Venus. Good, can play tennis good. Mm -hmm. And they're black. But we would know because of the media. Okay. So the media has a way of taking certain individuals and putting them on this pedestal. And we kind of like don't see behind them. But there's always been my position for those people at that spot to be able to say, you know what, there's some people back there that's just as good. 
and you should maybe take a look at them, whether you do or not, but to recognize that there is people that came from where you came from. Hmm. And it's trying to be, if not as good. I remember, uh, just to take the, the tennis players uh, as an example, um, I'm not quite sure the, the young lady that, that beat Serena. Oh, the uh, young lady from uh, Japan, Haitian. Yeah, but she was uh, black as well. Yeah. Black. Okay. Do you remember what she said when she was coming up? She said, you will always be my idol. I've mm. always looked up to you. Yeah. See, we have to understand that when we get to this plateau, that there's somebody looking and we're giving somebody inspiration. Yes. Because I know it was my teacher who gave me inspiration to get where I'm at. See, it's hard for us to look down and see who's in the crowd that's looking at us or who's being affected by us. But we have to stay true to the line because somebody is being inspired by what we do. So I tend to think that uh, keeping up that inspiration will keep down that ignorance because somebody else will come up. You know, Dominic Fields, you know, look at this. Who won that? Who ever to this day won that many Olympic um, medals? Yeah. But there's some child right now saying if she could do it, I can do it. Yeah. And I think martial art inspires that. And I think that a lot more of, of children of color will be more inspired if they understood that there are more masses out there like that. Mm. That there is a Supreme Grand Master Dr. Moses Powell who's been doing this since 1959 and the creation of the system Salubis for Jiu Jitsu. Mm. That there is, name the system and name it like that. Name it and say the name, the origin of it and when it began. Because see, this is a culture amongst us as a people anyway. There was a time when if you ask me my name, I would say Hassan Khalid, son of Benta Khalid. I had to put that all in the same sentence. I talk mm. about my mother, my father when I pronounce my name. It's not done anymore. This is about me. This is about me. You know, a lot of people don't even understand the, the origin of a maiden name. Mm. Why are you allowed to still give a woman to kill them? Because you're still a part of that family. Mm. That's a family. You take that with you. Mm. You take on the name of the husband, but you still have a maiden name because you came from something. Mm. See, but we, the children lose that now. Mm. And when they come into a martial arts school, I don't even think that a lot of children are taught the history of the school that they're in. Ask them. <laughs> Half of them don't even know the address of the building, much less the foundership of the style that they're in, the teacher, and who was before your teacher. I think that's important, mm. especially for our children, because it takes us back to understand that you are connected. And it's your connection that's going to be part of your success.